very impressed with the governor's uh, budget message. He obviously uh, laid out exactly what the problems are in our state. He pointed out that I think that this is not unique to Illinois. All the states have these problems. Uh, he does propose some further cuts. We did cut $2.2 billion out of the budget last year, 11 percent, proposes further cuts. He also talks about spending the money that we have uh, wiser, wisely uh, by having performance audits. Uh, he talks about the idea of uh, rebidding contracts. And uh, I have personally been working on and will sponsor legislation to have some pension reforms so that we can save money over the course of the next uh, 35 years, billions of dollars. Um, he also has some ideas on how to continue the creation of jobs. Last year, we were the only state in the nation that passed a jobs bill of the magnitude that we did. It's going to create a number of jobs starting in the spring, uh, road construction and the like. And the governor's uh, plan for tax credits for small businesses is going to create more jobs. Uh, we, in the Senate last year, also realized that we needed more revenues. Uh, we have a $13 billion deficit. The Civic Committee in Chicago has proposed tax increases of $7.8 billion. Uh, I don't think we need to have that high of an increase. But the governor has clearly pointed out that as part of his cuts, we'd have $1.2 million, billion dollars in, in education. And clearly he has uh, indicated to the General Assembly that if you want to avoid that, you have to consider voting for a surcharge. This is something that we've already taken up in the Senate last year when we uh, passed our revenue. So we are going to look to the House to ask them to consider uh, this 1% surcharge that the governor has proposed. I'm certainly in favor of it. I'm sure the majority of the Senate would be. But it's up to the House to decide whether or not they want to have these devastating uh, education cuts. Uh, right now, we are not paying our school districts the money we owe them. There's over 663 million dollars in bills that we owe. Uh, Chicago, over 200 million dollars is owed. In Senator Brady's district, eight million dollars is owed to his school districts because we don't have the money. So this is something that we clearly uh, have focused on in the Senate. We've had hearings on taking a 10 percent cut across the board and we haven't had one witness come in and testify in favor of that. Uh, so we have a idea here of cutting across the board that doesn't make any sense. Uh, the numbers don't add up when we ask the Republicans for their help. Uh, so I would urge the House to act and respond to the governor's proposal as it, so that we don't have to have these devastating cuts uh, for education. John, I have to answer any questions. John, are, are, are the Republicans on the spot here in front of this 1% surcharge? <clears throat> We'd like to see the House act. Um, uh, I've, every major uh, revenue increase in the history of the state of Illinois has had bipartisan support. It, it's been the Governor Dogelby, Thompson, and Egger. Uh, the Republicans in the House, I think, along with the Democrats, have to take this issue up uh, and lead the way. And the Senate will certainly follow. We took our actions last year. It's clearly now focused on education and avoiding draconian cuts to education, class sizes to be increased. And just providing the money to pay the school district what we owe them uh, based on the appropriation levels that we now have. Would that 1% be enough, or would the General Assembly have to come back at some point in time and vote on another tax increase proposal? You know, the governor's asked for this 1%. That's what he's asked for. That's what we should be taking up this year. And uh, again, we've already acted in the Senate, so it's really up to the House to decide. John, does, uh, in saying 1%, does that imply temporary? Uh, the economy is definitely improving. Uh, we have started to see a, uh, uh, a slight increase in our estimates as to how much money would come in. Uh, we still have a $13 billion deficit, but if the House fashions a bill that makes it uh, temporary so we can address this crisis that we have right now, the worst economic crisis in our lifetime, uh, then I would support that as well. If you had the pension changes that you were recommending, would you look to capture those out year savings in, in the near term? The pension savings will pass. I can tell you that. We have a very, very good chance of passing that. It'll save over $50 billion in payments in the next 35 years. We will reduce our liabilities over the next 35 years by over $150 billion. 
Now, whether some actuarial studies will show that you can take some of that savings now or not, we don't know. Uh, but we need to do it for the long term. And it'll help our credit rating immediately in the state when we pass it. And I won't be sponsoring those. Is that a defined benefit or a defined contribution? No, it's, the, it's the same uh, system we have now. What we're going to do is change uh, the way people are living longer so they'll work longer before they can get their maximum benefits. And we're going to cap the amount that a pension can be um, annualized at $150,000. So this is something which is going to save a tremendous amount of money. I would hope that we'll get support from the unions that will be affected and support uh, from everyone in the Senate. Do you know any further specifics on the governor's income tax hike and health kind of together? No, this was the governor's idea. It's the governor's uh, plan, and uh, I support it. Did you know about it before he said it in the speech? No, I did so how do you think you are saying that we should have uh, cuts in Medicaid? Uh, We've been waiting for the Republicans' language for two years. You know, this is not, uh, there's a difference between a press conference and a press release and a piece of legislation. That's what I was emphasizing yesterday. Senator Brady is the first senator in uh, 106 years to be a member of the General Assembly and running for governor. He can introduce a bill, he can introduce his own budget. We'll give him that opportunity. We'll urge him to do it. So uh, for them to say their savings in Medicaid, 77% of all the people in Medicaid already are in managed care. And so give us the language, and we'll have hearings on it. Give us the language on your cuts. They haven't even proposed um, any cuts at all. They've just been talking about the generalities. So they have not been participating in, in uh, Help solve our, our, our budget. And have you talked to a leadership in the House to see if this proposal is any more palatable than the one that you see in the last year? Well, it's obviously a much lower uh, increase and it's targeted to education. So I'll let the, the House consider it. I just hope that uh, they would pass it. If they do, I'm sure we can pass it. What has Speaker Madigan said to you, if anything, about the proposal? Well, we haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. How do you safeguard the perception? I mean, a generation ago, the lottery was set up to, to fund education, and, and, and since then, people have you know, been very skeptical that I that's think, what it was set up. How I does think, this not become another lottery? I, think the, uh, I know you're, you're I want to compliment that sometimes we're starting to focus on uh, educating people, especially in the Chicago area, about what is in the budget. So the lottery brings in $600 million. Okay, we spent $11 billion on education. People have to start learning the numbers. And if we didn't have the lottery, we'd be $600 million short. So um, people have to learn where we spend our money. Only 10% of the money we bring in goes to the operation of the state government. And so when people say cut the waste, they have to understand it. We've done that. But well, now we're talking about cutting bone in, in education funding, which is really an investment in the future, not uh, just paying some people for nothing. These are our kids. So I think it's a very it's a good opportunity in a crisis like this to uh, educate people about what the state does and so they'll learn more about what the budget is all about. Would passing this 1% tax increase make uh, uh, legislators unsure about an income tax more reluctant to pass one later? Well, we'll have to see what happens. Maybe if the revenues start to grow and the capital bill starts to generate new jobs, uh, we'll see what our budget crisis will uh, might abate a little bit in the, in the future. Uh, I certainly don't see how we can get out of, of a $13 billion uh, deficit out of $26 billion. I don't see how you can get out of that with, uh, without some major revenues. But that's what we've already done, didn't pass the House, and so now we're focused on just trying to save these cuts in education. Mm -hmm.